When you start a print, how do you decide what settings to use? Of course, parameters like the shell thickness or the info percentage are something that needs to be decided on a print by print basis. But what I mean are the settings that ideally you figure out once and then leave as a preset for future you. But what if those presets are wrong? What if you didn't even tune those in yourself and use whatever the filament manufacturer suggests or stick with uh, the presets that come with your slicer? How do you know that whoever made those profiles actually did a good job? How do you know you are achieving your filament's true potential? Well, you methodically test your settings and see if you can find anything that works better. But because that's actually quite a bit of work, uh, I tried to do that for you. And for the last three weeks, I've dedicated my main workhorse printer exclusively to printing test parts that would help me determine the best hardened temperature for the job. We're going to test PLA and PTG inside and outside of their comfort temperatures. And we'll look at aesthetic differences and at what pin temperature you'll get the strongest parts too. And no, it's not quite as simple as just going print hotter, get stronger parts. There is quite a bit more to it. But you know what's actually quite simple? Today's sponsor, JLC PCB. J JLC PCB will fabricate your PCB and 3D printing designs at very affordable rates. For 3D prints, simply upload your STLs and you'll instantly get a quote for resin, nylon, ABS or metal prints that you can get shipped to you within a week. For PCBs, they'll process your Gerber files and I've actually used JLC PCB quite a bit for my own projects because they'll even assemble all your SMD components onto the boards for you. That is super convenient and has opened up so many new possibilities for me. Get your own PCBs and 3D prints from JLC PCB at the link below. So what seems to be the generally agreed upon understanding is that there is a normal print temperature for any filament, 215 for PLA, 230 for P2G and so on. And that is generally going to be the one you want to use. But if you want parts that are stronger and welded together better, you choose a higher temperature. And if you want parts that just look a bit more crisp and less blobby, you choose a slightly lower temperature. But there are two, prob two problems with this. First, if you print hotter, you're not just getting better layer welds, you're also thermally degrading a filament. With ABS, you're actually specifically boiling off some of the components that make uh, the filament tough and slightly flexible. That's that horrible ABS smell that you get. And with PTG in particular, you have a process called hydrolysis, where the hotter it gets, any moisture in the filament will violently turn to steam and actually rip the polymer chains apart that make up the plastic. At least that's how E3D explained it to me a while ago. And ripped apart shorter polymer chains mean a more brittle plastic. So by increasing the temperature, you may have gotten better layer welds, but you made the material itself weaker. There's also the challenge of your material bubbling up, your extrusion getting less consistent, which makes for more gaps in the parts. It's all factors that you're going to have to weigh against the gain you might be getting from better layer adhesion. The other way around, uh, dropping temperature, only goes so far. You know, when your filament is less molten, uh, the extruder and hardener are going to have a harder time pushing it and laying down filament in exactly the right spots that you want, which often results in under extrusion or even extruder skips. So let's get this tested. I prepared two different plates for each temperature for PLA and PTG. One to look for aesthetic differences between temperatures and one to test the strength. I'm using one of my Mark III's with a 0.6 millimeter Revo, which of course is the best nozzle size there is. And I'm slicing with Prusa Slicer 2.50 Beta 3 using Arachne and the included 0.2 millimeter lay high profiles. Then all I'm doing is uh, that I'm changing the temperature for everything but the first layer, because we kind of know that the default contact temperature is going to work for keeping the parts stuck while printing, and then more importantly, for being able to release them again once the print is done. For the aesthetic test parts, even though they're all on the same plate, I'm printing them sequentially one at a time, which means I only have to start a print once and I'll get all four parts printed in sequence exactly as if I had started them one by one. On the plate, we've got, of course, a 3D bench sheet. You can't really do tests without that. Um, we've got the Tom test with dedicated areas for bridging, fine details, text curling and overhangs. We've got a scaled down Salty McCready and finally the Prusa SL1S test part with some insanely fine details. For the strength test, we've got the bend strength and the impact strength test parts, both printed in two different orientations uh, and with two copies of each. As always, 
These are all done with normal print settings. Uh, two shells, 15% infill, you know, just like you would print your own parts because I think that is more representative and frankly more interesting than just looking at the failure mode of a boring standardized test sample that's pretending to be an injection molded part at 100% infill. It's just not the reality of what a 3D print really is. But let's start out with how the parts look. Honestly, pretty bad, <laughs> some of them. Um, so we get a ton of stringing with the higher temperatures, especially with the PTG. In this case, uh, this is Extruder XPTG Matte White. I did dry all the filaments in the iBoss dry box for a bit before I started the prints, and then occasionally turned the dryer back on while printing, but still, what I got with the XPTG would never fit in my test fixtures. Like most of these have stringing and blobs and, and everything on them. Bridges just didn't print well at any temperature and the parts didn't look great overall and they did not print reliably. So I actually reprinted all the mechanical test parts in PTG uh, with Prusamin PTG. And those turned out so much better. And honestly, they all look fine, except for, you know, these super high temperature ones that have this branch buildup that PTG likes to do. These are prints at uh, 210, 230, 250, 270, 290 degrees. Um, the test parts were done up to 270. And the one thing to notice is that the lower temperatures, not with the matte filament, those are all matte, but the Prusamin PTG and PLA, um, they have a surface finish that is a lot more matte than the high temperature ones. And also, I don't think it's just that extra glossiness that amplifies it, but with the higher temperatures, the surface finish also looks like it's getting bumpier the more we turn up the heat. And you can see the exact same thing with PLA. Uh, this is also Prusa Mint. It's completely matte, basically, when printed at 195 degrees Celsius, and then turns more and more glossy with each step to 215, to 35, to 55, and finally, uh, to 75 degrees Celsius. Of course, stringing is also increased to a point where uh, the 295 degree aesthetics test plate didn't finish, so I don't have the parts for that here. Um, but up to 275, it's mostly under control. Specifically with PLA though, uh, the top surfaces also started becoming less and less smooth with the higher temperatures. While marginally fine details like the top structure on the SL1S test model actually printed better at high temperatures, both with PLA and the PTG. Notably, overhangs all look identical with PLA uh, at any temperature, and this time around, uh, this small feature on the TOM test, this is I think a one millimeter pin, printed perfectly fine using Prusa Slicer 2.50 Beta 3, while Beta 2 from the last video was still having some issues with it. Thumbs up for that improvement. So from an aesthetic standpoint, I'd say the default print temperatures, both for PLA and PTG, are fine. Other than the matte surface finish, which honestly I do think is a pretty cool and legitimate reason to print colder, but other than that, you're not actually getting your prints to be crisp or anything. But what about part strength? Well, I'm glad you asked. My test parts are the usual Philippine style ones. For the bent test, they go into a jig, I hook a luggage scale onto them, and then I gently pull down on the scale until they break. Simple enough. Now, the impact test is a bit different, and here we're measuring how much energy the parts absorb while breaking. The hammer swinging down always starts with the same amount of kinetic energy the moment it hits the part, and the further the tougher the material is, the more it slows down the hammer. And the slower the hammer is, the shorter up its swing it's going to end. Basically, if it reaches the very top like this, uh, the pipe was just too brittle to slow it down at that point at all. And the less far it swings up from here, the tougher the part was. What I immediately noticed uh, is that the lower temperature parts, PLA and PTG, pretty often get stuck in the jigs. So this one is tight. Yeah, this is also one of the colder ones. Um, these have a bit of tolerance between the sample and the holder, but the parts printed below nominal temperatures were even too big for that. Now, if I could find the other half, there it is. This was printed at 210 for PHG. Yeah, there we go. I don't know why that's happening, but if you've got an idea, maybe leave a comment below. So from this point forward, it was actually just about breaking part after part. With the impact test, you can actually hear quite a difference between a brittle part and one that's tougher and is going to absorb more energy. 
Interestingly, all the PTG parts that were printed flat broke in a way that's actually really good for functional parts. Instead of snapping in half like uh, the PLA did, they stretched, they pulled, they kinked, meaning they failed gradually. Typically, if you have even just a slightly moist PTG filament, it's going to snap off much more sharply uh, because of the hydrolysis that I mentioned earlier. Let's actually try this. So this is 250 degrees. Yeah, there we go. That snapped right off. Let's start with the results for these bend tests. PLA's material strength actually stays pretty consistent across temperatures, with an ever so slight dip past 275 degrees Celsius, and a significant reduction in strength when printed at just 195 degrees Celsius. If you look at the layer adhesion results, we can see why you're missing out on a lot of layer adhesion potential when you're printing that coal. But layer adhesion, or at least strength in the Z direction, also drops off pretty sharply when we're increasing temperature. Now, this could be down to the fact that we're losing material for these test parts in stringing. Yeah, um, and the parts themselves actually ending up slightly under extruded. Or the fact that extrusion control just isn't great anymore at these temperatures. The parts do end up looking slightly scuffed at those temperatures. In either case, it looks like the default 215 degrees Celsius is exactly where you should be printing PLA. At least at default speed. There are no gains to be had in strength or in how cleanly the prints turn out by increasing or decreasing your hardness temperature. That's pretty good, eh? Now, PTG was pretty similar, just at a slightly higher temperature. I should note that the default temperature for Prusa Mint PTG in Prusa Slicer on the Prusa Mark III is 250 Prusa degrees instead of the normal 230 or 235 that you'll see elsewhere. But here as well, 250 is where you're going to get the best performance and where you should be printing this stuff. There is an advantage in how much this PTG is going to string by going down to 230 degrees Celsius, but that already comes at a significant penalty to layer adhesion. Now, impact strength. This one's hard to interpret, especially since the results here have a lot more noise in them. I could have tested several hundred samples instead of the couple dozens uh, that I did to get a wider average of results, but that would have taken an extra couple weeks to print and days to test. It's pretty scary how quickly the effort required to do these tests scales up. What I'm seeing here is that the impact strength seems to go up with extremely low and extremely high temperatures. Why? No idea. I could see how the high temperatures get the material slightly foamed up, which could get it to break more gradually and absorb more energy that way. But yeah, this is a bit of a mystery and possibly more noise than actual data. So, what do we learn? Well, there's a reason why we landed on the temperatures that we now usually print at. They give you the strongest parts without degrading the overall print quality. And yeah, print hotter, get stronger parts, not really true, unless maybe you've got a hot end that just isn't particularly good at getting heat into the filament. I've done testing uh, for that on the Revo, and it's actually a bit better at heat transfer than V6, but it's by no means a super high flow hot end. Also, maybe one last note. The temperatures I'm finding here aren't necessarily the same for all printers across all brands. High quality thermistors and mainboards will usually have relatively tight tolerances on the parts involved with measuring temperatures, but it's not all that uncommon to see an offset of plus or minus 10 degrees Celsius in the actual measured hot end temperature between two cheaper machines. In either case, I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, subscribe, support, links here somewhere. Uh, keep on making and I'll see you in the next one.